Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on Monday, April 8th. Looking out into the abyss. According to implied vols for the week, all the risk reversals. Everyone expecting an incredibly and quiet week. Um, continued quietness. We shall see. Uh, we will remain vigilant and we will not overtrade, um, but we will remain vigilant. See how things look. Let's start. Uh, well, first, we'll just start with Asia was mildly uh, risk off, no real trigger. Aussie's off a bit. Um, some election sort of permutations are coming across the wires. Looks like Labor's got more of a stronghold on this. But really nothing uh, concrete, sort of just sort of a mystery uh, 10 handles in the S&Ps and a mystery Aussie move, 20, 25 pips. Let's see what the charts have to say and then let's see what the news has to say and we will <coughs> create a strategy for uh, this European Open. First chart here I have is this Euro Yen now. We have three um, hourly lows here, 124.97. And we have German trade coming up uh, in one hour. So on your toes for German trade, surely um, this will be negative. How negative, I guess, is the question. Um, we saw the German numbers on Thursday lead to a little bit of a euro left hand side uh, and then we saw some positive German numbers lead to the euro right hand side so this will move euro 20 pips or so but not more uh, in these fall conditions but it'll be interesting to see if we can get through this 125 it's kind of a pivot here 125.03 was the high before uh, these highs and now we have this pivot here at 97 triple bottom on the hourlies take a quick look at the dailies we had a doji on um, Friday on a very quiet uh, day uh, and mind you risk risk on day we still had a doji in Urien closed near the lows so this will be interesting to see if we can get continuation down through uh, one 24.97. Let's flip over to Aussie. Um, core short Aussie, core short Kiwi. We've been banging on this drum now for um, the last five days. Very little has happened. Of course, Kiwi turned pretty well, but Aussie has uh, been pretty stubborn. Um, you could you could call these indecisive days. Thursday is definitely indecisive. Friday was really a nothing day came close to bearish engulfing but then because we closed at 03 it's kind of a mildly bearish day but today we've now broken down through these lows um, we've printed the 87 low and now we're sitting here on the lows I only mention this this is a core short uh, it's a tradable short there's no drama here there's no excitement yet but this gets exciting down through 7050 and then of course it gets incredibly exciting down through 70. Implied vols are telling us that the range is going to be about 60 pips literally for the week. So let's not get too, too excited. But if we have these core shorts on and this does play out, it'll give us some flexibility on size uh, and on risk going down through um, these important lows when we get there. Take a look at Euro. Nothing really to report here. Uh, just dead. 10.32 in an incredibly quiet range. I mention it because these levels are now, you know, everybody knows this is massively important. This 111.75. It's, it's important for the Euro and also it's important for DXY. So that this 111.75 or that 111.75 will coincide with this magical uh, 97.72. Everyone and their uncle is looking at this level. A lot of people think it's a sell. A lot of people are going to add and think it's going to buy. 
So you would say the machines are going to add up here, the humans are going to sell up here. We'll see who wins. The point is, is there's going to be some money to be made, um, and there will be some little bit of added volume and volatility when we get up to 97.72. So you need to be alert. Obviously, because the euro is, you know, 60, I don't know what it is, 60, 70 percent of the DXY, it's really mainly a euro trade. So. DXY through 97.70 is Euro through 111.75. So we'll see which one's leading at the time, if and when we get there. Uh, but this is something you have to keep in mind. Um, even in this low vol scenario, people are forced, will be forced to trade. The big shops who are now sort of behind the curve return wise. Um, are forced to trade these levels because they need to try and they're, they're desperate to try and find alpha um, you know and for all of those of you who wish you uh, ran a hedge fund um, these are very stressful times when you're running a hedge fund uh, I obviously speak to a lot of guys who are in the business still I spent many years in the business these are desperate times for these guys because there's nowhere to run um, you know and you're forced, you know, you're on this clock, right? You're on this monthly clock, this quarterly clock, this semi-annual clock, and this yearly clock to, to create alpha. So, you know, this whole tick-tock scenario forces these guys. So, 111.75, they'll all be there, even in this low vol zone. Um... Hopefully it'll be driven by news. Hopefully it'll be driven by an event. Uh, I hope all of them make tons of money, as I do hope all of us, we make tons of money. Um, I guess the only people I hope that lose money are the robots. <laughs> but um, it's just something to keep in mind. 111.75. What else is out there? Uh, take a quick look at the Kiwi. It's just, just kind of sitting down here haven't made a new low yet today which is bang on this 200 day moving average um, the next sort of watershed moment is um, 67 the figure these lows here 6710 uh, to be exact 6707 this guy here this daily low is also 07 this is 19 Friday was 18 um, a daily close through the figure and then we and then we reach out for these um, flash crash lows, which are way down at 65.86. The nice thing about the Kiwi is there is there is a story. The central bank seems to clearly want their currency lower, um, and so uh, they have a good firm grip on what's going on. RBNZ uh, run by a bunch of professionals. This thing, I think, is just going to grind lower one way or the other. Uh, the elephant in the room, obviously, is the possible trade deal, but that's more Aussie positive than Kiwi positive, but it will be Kiwi positive, but, you know, we're full-on ready to fade um, the trade deal news at this point. Morgan Stanley made a great point over the weekend that the relationship with China is forever changed the cost of trade will be forever higher than it was. There's no way we're going back to the old regime, which is basically let China do whatever the hell they want. Um, and supply chains are just going to be more expensive. Companies need to get that through their head. So even a positive trade deal, we're sitting here thinking that's very priced in. Um, and so anyway, we're fading. Aussie, we're fading Kiwi on the trade news deal. Trade news deal when it comes. Finally, S and P's. Uh, we talked on Friday. Sell the band between 98 and 08 for a day trade. We literally got paid on the last freaking minute of the uh, open at 98. Turns out those were pretty good. Um, we're just in the rinse and repeat mode uh, on the tactical book. So we've already taken those back. We just got given at 91. Uh, we will be reoffering in that 9808 band. Try and have a core short on a safe average 
as our U.S. Uh, boys mentioned on the weekend video, we are perilously close to the all-time highs. So you have to keep in mind that this could trade. So we still, our bias is short, uh, but we're conservative short, right? We're not selling through the lows. We're only selling high ones. We're selling high ones, getting a good average, being conservative. And bizarrely, um, if you look at these last eight days, which this thing has gone up from 2830 to 2900, uh, our S&P P&L is, is positive uh, during this time, which, um, I mean, it's not, we're not, we're not buying a Maserati uh, with that P&L, but this cautious um, way of selling and being conservative and just grabbing pips keeps us with our focus, our main macro focus, which this is overdone. Um, and one of these days will allow us to have some ammo when this thing turns. And I will just leave today's video with this. This, of course, will turn eventually. We need an event. This won't turn on its own. Um, we have volatility at all-time lows, 2007, 2005, 2014. We're below these lows. We need an event to shake this up. The market's pricing in ECB as nothing this week. The market's pricing in trade is bullish. Could be Brexit. Could be Deutsche Bank. Uh, could be, it's, well, it's likely to be something that I'm not mentioning because it's usually something that's off the frontal lobe um, that is a surprise. So patiently wait. Try and grab some pennies during this period um, and wait for the event that will cue the music for a change in direction. All right, I've said enough. Wish you guys a very profitable day. Not too much. Just quickly, we have SNB uh, deposits, Eurozone, April sentiment, factory or um, trade balance out of the um, out of Germany is kind of the the best number this morning but obviously that's no one really cares about that too too much so should be a quiet morning and check us on twitter for how things evolve going into the afternoon good luck today make some dough talk to you guys tomorrow